Hey guys, welcome to Digital Screeny channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel right now. Please go ahead, pause the video, subscribe. Okay, now in this video, I'm gonna talk about, again, this is another tip or a trick, if you wanna call it, uh, in case you don't know. This video talks about performing additional tasks during your Keras data augmentation. What do I mean by that? You know how you can use image data generator as part of Keras API. And you can use that to augment your images. You can uh, load images directly from the disk. That's the primary reason uh, why I use the Keras data augmentation. Uh, not because I wanna generate new images by rotating and shifting. Sometimes I do that, but primarily, I cannot fit all of my 10,000 images, 20,000 images, right into the memory. So I wanna read them directly from the disk. And the easiest way to do that is by using Keras data augmentation and read from the folder. Now, while doing that, there are certain operations you may want to do uh, to these images. For example, again, like I mentioned, zooming in, ro rotating, scaling, all of those typical augmentation stuff, fine, great, you want to do that. But what if you would like to do additional stuff? For example, what if you would like to scale your inputs, not just divide by 255, like we do for you know image data, but what if you would like to scale it using something like min-max scalar, for example? what you would like to pre-process the data uh, uh, exactly the same way you have pre-processed a pre-trained network, right? You want to apply the same pre-processing. You have the function. How do you do that? Uh, when you're reading masks, especially for semantic segmentation, uh, for multi-class, how would you convert your images into categorical so they can be directly fed into your model.fit? Okay, so if that's of interest, please continue watching this video. I promise the, not to make this too long. Okay, so let's completely, let's directly jump into the code and then uh, uh, get started. Okay, so here I'm working with some uh, satellite uh, imagery and uh, I have quite a few images in, uh, in these folders. I have both images and masks and I cannot fit all of those into the memory. So I'm trying to read them you know, in batches, right? This is exactly what we are trying to establish as part of our uh, data gen. So let's go ahead. Again, I'll, I'll record another video dedicated to this, this satellite uh, imagery. So let's not worry too much about the application, but focus on the task right now, which is, uh, okay, how do I add additional stuff yeah, uh, to my augmentation? For some of you, this may be simple, but again, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't hurt to cover, you know, uh, fill any gaps in your knowledge. Okay, just to give you a quick idea of how the data set looks like, this is again one of the difficult ones. This is not an easy one. So here is the uh, original image, and here is the mask. Yeah, so you have these houses in different color, and again, there are I think like four different classes showing like four different uh, four different things. So there you go. In this image, you can see at least three different things, right? I mean, the, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, trees and houses and a background. It doesn't matter what your application is. Uh, if you're looking at semantic segmentation, hopefully you can relate to these uh, these images, okay? So now let's actually get down to the actual part. So what we typically do is use uh, the pre-processing uh, from Keras pre-processing, you're uh, going to use image data generator. Yeah, this part, I hope you know. And then we use this image data generator uh, to, to uh, you know, we provide certain arguments. In this case, all I'm doing is only horizontal flip and vertical flip, yeah? I'm not doing any zoom or rotation. And there is a reason for that, because when I do that in Keras, uh, I have to do the same operation for images and masks, and I haven't figured out how to turn the interpolation off for the masks, because when I rotate the mask, instead of having the, the labels as 0, 1, 2, 3, which is what I have in the original image. Now you see uh, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, because it's interpolating the values in between when you're rotating or zooming. So please, please be careful when you're trying to do semantic segmentation using masks like these. But flipping and uh, uh, you know horizontal and vertical, it's not doing much. But in this case, frankly, I have enough images. I don't need any additional augmentation anyhow, okay? So these are the arguments that I'm going to provide to image data generator that actually provides, uh, defines my image data generator, right? For the mask, I'm going to define exactly the same. Why am I doing it uh, two times? Because obviously for mask, my data is coming from a different folder 
compared to my uh, images. So far, so good. Nothing, I mean, this is stuff that you should know by now. Uh, so basically this generates the images, this generates the masks, and then I am uh, zipping them. So when I call train generator, it kind of gives me both uh, image and mask generator. So uh, now what happens is when I run this, it's going to give me image as 8-bit because we are not converting that image and my mask as an actual mask uh, uh, image, right? So where the pixel values go from zero to one, two, three, four in this example. Now, I would like to convert that mask into categorical. I hope I don't have to explain what categorical is for multi-class. Obviously we need categorical, the images converted as categorical. So in this case, since I have four classes, I need to have four channels, yeah, for each of these images. So I need to convert that and I also need to scale the images. Okay, so the way you do that is within your train function, your train generator uh, function that you're defining, once the images are uh, provided, once you have the train generator, the next step is let's go ahead and extract the train generator, right? So when I, when I extract my images and masks from train generator, I'll get a batch of images. So here I'm saying for each of these images, uh, image and mask, go ahead and pre-process my data. And this is the function I defined above. In a minute, I'll show you. So when I pre-process the data, uh, uh, it expects me to provide image, mask, and number of classes. Why? Let's go to pre-process function. So I defined an additional function. You can define any function you want. I'm just showing you the process that's it at a high level. So you can define your pre-process data function. And here, I'm processing both images and masks. That's why it requires image and mask as input. Why am I providing number of classes as input? Because when I convert my mask into categorical, obviously I need to provide the number of classes so it can actually uh, convert my masks into uh, categorical. That's it. So what am I doing to my images? I'm doing scalar fit transform. I define my scalar as min max scalar. So instead of dividing them, uh, the pixel values by 255, I'm applying a min max scalar. So that's what I'm doing right there. And once I apply the min max scalar, I am pre-processing my input. What is What does that mean? I am going to use a ResNet 34 backbone with uh, ImageNet weights from the library called segmentation models. So here they have already defined pre-processing. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do here, pre-process and then apply that to my images. It doesn't matter. This is a specific example here, but in general, the takeaway message from this whole thing is, uh, don't be frustrated that you cannot, uh, you cannot do additional things with image data generator. In fact, initially when I started working with Keras, uh, I was frustrated, that's why I'm making this video, that I thought that I was limited by what uh, uh, what I can do if I'm using Keras API. So that's exactly uh, what uh, you know I'm defining right here, right? I mean, I'm defining my image data gen, mask data gen. And up to this point, nothing should be surprising. Here, we get uh, a generator that gives us uh, images for training, that's it. All I'm doing is, in this, case, I'm explaining that, okay, go ahead and get each image and mask and do something. Define your own function to do something. Do not forget to add yield image and mask, right? When you say yield, that means it's giving you the batch of images and masks as we define up here, okay, which seems to be 16 images right there. I hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and uh, run these lines. So, okay, so I define this and then I define my min max scalar. I define my uh, my processing for uh, for uh, this backbone, ResNet backbone. And then I'm defining my pre-process data function, which takes image mask and number of classes and converts my images to whatever I, I defined here. Same with the masks into categorical, yeah? And then let's go ahead and define our train generator. So up to this point, we went through the code and let's go ahead and provide the training path and validation paths because obviously the generator takes in training image path and training mask path and number of classes as inputs. Okay, so my generator is ready. Now I can go ahead and do model.fit, but I want to see the images, visualize the images, okay? So you can do your train image generator that we just defined up here, yeah? and look at a batch of images at a time. So how do you do that? So go ahead and train image gen and next. Typically in Python 2, we used to do next, but in Python 3, that got renamed as underscore, underscore, next, underscore, and this. And this also I spent, I don't know how long, to figure that out that this is 
this is, you know, this has changed. It was driving me crazy because I was using old code and it wasn't working and not much, I mean, I, I, did, I, my fault, I didn't look at the documentation, but now you know, okay. So let's go here and there is no X and Y, right? So let's go ahead, uh, because when I run train image gen, it's giving me two things, right? Image and mask, that's why I'm un unpacking right there. X for image, Y for my mask, okay? Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So it detected 15,000 images, 15,000 images for uh, images and masks. And if I go down, my X is 16 images because my batch size is 16. Each image 256 by 256 by three. And then you see they're all float. That means it already applied that function. My Y, my masks are 16, 256, 256 by four. And four represents these four, uh, ch uh, these, these four uh, two categorical uh, channels right, my four classes. So I know that it's processed, yeah? So let's go ahead and plot it. I'm converting my, uh, you know, my two categorical back to back to argmax, yeah, so I can plot it. So if you want to look at these images one at a time or three at a time, right, I mean, I'm plotting three images at a time. You see there is image number one, image number two, image number three, everything looks good, nothing changed. They are kind of, they're obviously transformed based on my image data gen, but uh, everything seems to be working fine. So I hope again, uh, you learned something new. If you already know this, uh, well, I guess uh, the message is reinforced. If you don't know this, then uh, I hope you found this to be a very, very useful and valuable uh, valuable uh, tutorial. Stay tuned for these ones. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still in the process of exploring what unit works best and all that stuff. And once I get the code ready, I'll definitely record a video on, on, these, uh, on, this, uh, on this topic. So thank you guys. And uh, again, please do subscribe if you haven't already done so.